mark of a true warrior in my mind and sort of the philosophy behind it. Why do we train martial arts, right? It's like, oh, we want to train to defend ourselves. We want to train to fight people. Really, it's about protecting people at the, at the core of why a lot of these were created outside of war times, right? So we have to ask ourselves, what's the goal? Like if someone attacks you and you can always see uh, sort of the higher level mental state of a martial artist. And in my opinion, the highest level, say uh, someone's in a bar fight and say if a drunk guy attacks me, I don't know, he thinks I looked at his girlfriend or something and he's out of it and he's all drugged up or drunk and he attacks me. Like in my mind, I'm not going to try and like injure or like maim this person where a low level, I'm going to try and like just, you know, get him out of the way, not harm him and say, you know, go home. He's, he's probably having a bad day anyway, or he's depressed or something. Right. And a lot of people, unfortunately on the lower spectrum, uh, that sort of barbaric spectrum would say, Ooh, Ooh, I get a free pass to like really hurt somebody. And I've heard like first uh, hand accounts of this, of people doing this. Oh yeah, this guy attacked me. I'm like, Oh, it was so good. It felt so good to just like kick his face in and man, I, I was good. Like didn't get arrested. And I was like, Oh, put it on yeah, YouTube. It's terrible. Yeah. Get right. millions of views. <laughs> right. Exactly. So that's the thing. Man. It's, sort of the, it's, it's, there's an irony there. Right. And it's, it's very interesting. The, the duality of it because it's okay how do you reach the highest level of fighting is not fighting all right so it's, it's yeah. very interesting you know i you know it's same thing in philosophy though because i i love the way you're putting that by the way because uh, you know i think a Thank warrior you. has to have a code and i think a warrior mm -hmm. um the, the best warriors don't actually have to fight right same thing with philosophy in a way um it is nice to see people it, pardon the pun but get their shit pushed in when they are they're doing something wrong right and and they especially in a philosophical way where somebody's putting forth a bad argument they're promoting something that we all know is flawed and somebody comes in and Absolutely. just creams them. we all like to watch this I, I you know and i'm guilty of this myself i love to watch i like doing it there is something fun about saying hey i, I cream that guy right but the highest right. thing in philosophy would to, to appeal to would be like you never even have to bother to get that far right unfortunately those yeah. are just works in progress but i do agree with you wholeheartedly the best fights are the ones that are not fought Yes. Yeah. So it's interesting. How do you even reach that level? There's so many questions. Right? And uh, a lot of it is sort of just, just, just this intangible feeling or like it's kind of like this enlightenment that you reach. And it's funny, like, honestly, the more I'll put it like this, the more or the better I got at martial arts and sort of the, the more confidence you gain. And then you start to realize it's like, ooh, it's so easy to hurt somebody. And it's not even arrogance like thinking, ooh, I'm so dangerous now. No, like you start to realize, like I said a million times, a kid could, could kill somebody. Like by mistake, it's like we're so fragile. We're such fragile beings. Like our bodies, it's so easy to get injured and to die, of course. Um, so you start to realize, like, you, you almost develop this sensitivity and this sort of uh, awareness of, oh man, I don't want to hurt people. Like, it's so easy to hurt people. I have these skills now. Let's definitely never use them. Like, I'll use that restraint that I've learned to not use them. That's the higher level. Like, again, you can kind of just throw out a punch, like Steve right now, right? He took, he said, what, one class of karate? He knows how to punch. Yeah, I took like, <laughs> I took I took six, I took six months. In our return, yeah. Oh, okay. I was in the military. Too. You learn how to fight in the military. You have right. To have exactly. So okay, and let, that's a bad example because you're a good fighter. But you know, find somebody who's never fought in their life in a fit of rage. You can throw out a punch and hurt anybody, right? So uh, it's it's that different level of self awareness and uh, sort of that respect you gain. I'll I'll give you uh, an interesting tidbit about myself. I have never once been in a fight, just a, like a physical fight. In my life, that's good. Once. Oh, you missed, you missed out. If you if you ever taken a punch, because I used to box a little bit too in high school and in the navy. I, 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 I you, one of the ways you study your discrepancies or or issues in the military is you fight physically, right? Yep. I mean, it yep. happens, and so you can't you can't alleviate that. If you're going to join the military, you're going to get in a fight in in, in some time or yep. another. But if you can do it boxing, at least there's rules, right? At least it's moderated. You know, you're not going to die because, as you pointed out, you can get really hurt really quick. I've been I've right. been slapped in a, in a in, I've been slapped in a bar fight to the point where I thought I was going to like have my head fall off. Okay, it hurts by right. a big guy, a, a guy that actually owned a clothing line for like gym stuff. Okay, it hurt. Not going to happen again. Oh yeah. But boxing is is more of a controlled means, right? So if you haven't been punched, yes. it it sucks. But you learn how to kind of take it, and so. It, yeah. it, it is it, it makes you a little bit stronger in character but as you said we are fragile man it, it's not fun being in a fight it's Incredibly. not yeah and it and is even, a great learning experience like even even like light sparring that's, that's something maybe you should do sometime Carl, uh, kyle is just like put on some headgear you know be really safe shin pads the whole deal do some light sparring just kind of like the you reach this interesting point of uh instinct in a fight and i like to call this battle high because it's really what happens you really do get tunnel vision especially like steve said after you've taken a few punches and yeah, instinct kicks in, man. And you, you see nothing, you think of absolutely nothing. It's actually quite refreshing in this sort of 
distracted, digitized world we live in uh, to experience this of nothing exists besides your opponent. And you get into this survival situation and it's, it's yeah. quite, quite amazing. You learn, and I say this, you learn a lot about yourself, possibly the most about yourself in, in those uh, fighting or even street fight situations, how you act. Okay, do you want to run? Do you do you shirk away from it? Yes. Do you actually say no? Yes. Let's do this. The first option. <laughs> Fight or flight. The first option. Um, <laughs> I, uh, oh, there's no, right. no, right, no right option. Even, there's no correct response. Even in uh, even when when I spent that year in prison, I saw fights every day, every single day. Like literally, you right. would you would see fights ev- all around you, and I was never sure. I was just never I've never really been messed with like you know in and I've never had anybody that. angry enough with me to. Um, to fight me like that. I'm just, to me, I'm just a laid back person. Like I, I don't, I don't rock people's boats and I don't, you know, if they, whatever they want to do. So, um, you know, I've never just been in a situation where I needed to, uh, to fight. What would happen if I had to now probably I'd get my ass kicked or I would run. Like you said, uh, I would take option one <laughs> and nothing yeah. wrong with that. A fight or flight. That's sometimes you got to take okay. the flight. I have no problem with that. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I got to ask though. I mean, cause I'm you're a total so well trained. When you when you're doing like choreography and you're doing like um, like we did with Brittany, um, you know right. you have such you're obviously very well very well trained. There must have been a point where you have to override your instinct to do something because you obviously didn't want to hurt her. Um, I oh, think yeah. she'd probably kick her ass in real life if she really wanted to, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be a fun thing to, to actually see. But but I think there she is some training. Really and we, 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 I bet she does. She's a professional. I mean, she's a professional cheerleader, right? That's her. her well, her no, thing. the funny thing is, I like- mean. If you, Quick side note: She she is she's not trained in fighting. She's just insanely flexible because the cheerleading and stuff. So yeah. she can just put her body in any position in existence. So I'm like, okay, do this, this, and that, and she does it. But she actually doesn't have that control, so she just kind of like. But you may not be. Ex- but that's even worse. You don't awesome. know what to expect. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> great though, like because expect. like a lot of people are are really afraid, and I love that Brittany just she just does it, man. It's like so good. Yeah, she's a great person to film. That's with. awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. You do have to. You... Uh, you do have to kind of turn that off. Um, like, so yeah, there's a different, on your, there's a different uh, side to it. There, um, uh, I know that you have okay. some, uh, some points that you wrote down, um, that you kind of wanted to, uh, to run through. Let's, let's go ahead and tackle, um, one of those and get into uh, this a little bit deeper. Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, okay. So your, your, okay. your first point that you, that you had was, um, was what again? So we were wondering, uh, as you thought about it, and then I saw your title, it actually got me thinking about something I thought about a while ago. And it's kind of like, what is creativity? Right? How do we describe it? Or how do we define right. creativity? It's actually a lot harder than some people would think on the philosophy side of things, right? Because it's like, what is creativity? Is it let's try, let's see if we can do it. Sort of a tangible... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's kind of like... Yeah, at, um, at, I'll give you my definition people, and Steve is... can... Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh but it, when you say creativity to me, I I think it's the ability to uh, create, to bring something from the uh, that that doesn't exist into the world in your own personal way. Like it's the ability to kind of spin a unique creation. Steve. Yeah, I mean, you have that ability. I, I don't. I mean, I'm not so much. I mean, I do in other fields. I have some creativity when it comes to like novel approaches to things, but I don't have the skill set that Kyle has. I think that that is the mar- the hallmark of a genius, in my opinion. And I, I, Kyle's never going to let me live this down, but Kyle's a genius when it comes to that kind of stuff. God, I can't believe I just said that. Somebody shoot me. Aha. Um, but he, that's a skill set that he has, right? Okay. I mean, I don't have that. And I've always maintained that true genius is innovation. Um, my dad was an innovator. He had many patents. I wasn't blessed with that particular ability, except in very myopic scope. And so, yeah, I agree with Kyle. Very good. You, well, you're a genius in philosophy. Yeah, that's, that's a great I'll, I'll admit that. Um, so, uh, so what do you think did it you is, hear, um, get that Philip? On, what, what did you, put that on loop, please? They all heard it. <laughs> they all heard it. Uh, when Recording. you were researching or you're yeah. looking into creativity, what do you um, what did you kind of come up with, and what do you think uh, creativity is? Well, that's the interesting part because I think a lot of people, the first thought that a lot of us have, and you kind of mentioned this, is sort of bringing something to life, right? To be able to create, and the first thing that we usually think of is sort of this tangible, like like what do we bring to life? Though, how do you define it? 
and that's the hard part. So is, is it a tangible thing that I can touch, that I could, that I could listen to, that I can watch, uh, that I can experience in some way with the senses? Um, but then it's like, what about ideas? Right? Like, what if you think of an idea, but then don't explain it to anyone? Does the idea exist? And there's all these questions. Like, it, creativity is a very strange thing. So then, that's a deep question. It, it is. It, it becomes it becomes hard to find. I think, and it's like the thing that's really sort of almost a contradiction about creativity is that I think freedom is another idea that comes to mind. The creativity is like you need freedom of thought. You need freedom to be able to create. You can't be too enclosed. Right? You can't be too constrained. But here's the really strange thing: is that structure and creativity like creativity can't exist without structure it can't exist with in fact like rigid immovable structure if you think about it right because okay even an idea how do you express that well language incredibly structured you can't just blab out sounds from your mouth right to explain an idea and then uh you know painting right a picture frame it's incredibly limited structure to be able to express so people you know of course uh they come up with ways to express it. sciences to express it it's like a hey, perspective. We'll, we'll figure out how to do that from scratching on a cave wall as a caveman to, you know, Rembrandt, like we'll figure this stuff out. And then, you know, beyond that, you have other structures like, you know, Shakespeare, iambic pentameter, uh, you have Homer and, you know, there's these structured poems, right. And it becomes some of the greatest creative feats, I think is from extreme structure. So this is when we get into martial arts, it's sort of a similar thing. And the debate of sort of dogmatic, traditional, versus the new age science uh, are we adding things are we blending science into it like i said biomechanics there's a lot that can be gained from these things and, and exploring them but for the same thing is okay in any movement pattern if you're following it it's not creative really you're just repeating the movements in, in almost like a, an alphabet way absolutely not creative it's like you're just doing it but then if you by that same token go okay i'm gonna just absolutely not follow anything like that itself is a structure right that itself is a rule <laughs> it's a hard rule so it's kind of hard to define like hey what is true oh, yeah, creativity definitely right? well, when you point. decide on a specific structure like for example if i want to write an iambic pentameter i've decided that's the structure i want to do right. i can be creative in that narrative i can't write like shakespeare but i could be creative in that way once i have decided the initial rules to be which I'm going to be working with, like you said, you have to work with linguistically. Once I've decided I'm going to be working with this particular language, then I could be yeah. creative in that, right? If I want to work with painting, then I have to obviously have to understand paints and canvases and something like that. So I think th this goes to the, the, the whole principle behind like um, philosophy. When you have a subjective framework, you can then have things that are objective and you can, things have, cre you can have creativity the same way. Creativity stems from the fact that you are starting with things that are subjective, but once you decide how that you want to go about that, the sky's the limit. Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, you, you have to have like, you have yeah, to have form, right? You get you, in order to like make yeah, shit up, you have to understand the basics, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, it's thing, and no one will be impressed for it. Otherwise, you have these, in my opinion, like garbage movements, like the Dada movement in art, which is like you know, here's a toilet. <laughs> Excuse me. That, here's a the, here's a cross, upside down cross in urine. Truth. It's art. Yeah, yeah true. Exactly. It's, it's absurd. Yeah, yeah. Has, I mean that's I the point. It's absurdist, but art has become I'm so something glad you that agree is, with that. It's just a mess. You can you can throw something together and put it up, right. and you can see these out in cities, like uh, in downtown Greensboro, where I'm from. They they've literally taken a. It looks like they took a uh, like a bulldozer and scooped up a big pile of whatever was at the uh, the impound lot, just gears and <laughs> twisted rebar, and yeah. it's just. And then they put it. Rust and all, in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the where the town uh, the city hall is, and it's got like a placard that that explains the person's name. But really, it looks like just a punch of of you know scooped yeah. up shit and dumped in the uh, the uh, thing. And but they call it art. Like this is something that's yeah. that that is <laughs> there's a reverence for it because it's you know they Absolutely. took the time to take the rebar and and form it just so. So I mean that's a very oh, good point. Yeah. Well, not I mean. not everybody like, can be a Jackson Pollock, right? <laughs> right. I was just going to mention Jackson Pollock, too, because you have these people who are. Yeah. But the thing is, he was almost the first to do it. So then is everyone an imitator? And then there's somebody. But, you know, it's art. It's creativity, mm -hmm. which you can't. You know, it's opinion based to an extent. So that's the weird thing mm -hmm. about it. Like, you know, filmmaking, speaking of the, the fight scenes and everything. And each one's a gamble. You don't know what people. It's okay. They enjoyed something similar last time. Maybe they like this one. I, I don't know. Like that was. I did oh, a, a video with Brittany before, and it was. It's my top performing video I've ever done. It. I think it's got like 
1.4 million views on YouTube. Yeah, you're well, so, you know, one and a half million views it has. Yeah, it's like, let's That's do impressive. it again. Let's, 